What's up, guys? Welcome back to Views. Nice. That was good. Good tone. Okay. Good register. Thank you. You're already in the pocket. Bro, my hand is shaking. Yeah. Could be the, the caffeine, but this is weird. I had a little diarrhea just now. <laughs> I'm just I now on breathe. the white seats. Yeah. It's a bummer. <laughs> um, it's the ayahuasca. So I don't even know where, where, where do we start? How, how do we even do this? this? This podcast has been building for some time. Yeah. And oh, this this episode. Yeah, this episode. I don't think it's this episode. I think it's. Okay. I think it's what you. No, I'm not saying it's not going to happen this episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying, like, I think. I mean, you've been bringing this up to me for a while. Yeah. Like you were like, we make all these podcasts, and we're always talking about dicks and farts, and yeah. we never actually talk about like how you're really feeling. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and you always say like, if it was my podcast, which yeah, it is. Yeah, you're like, if it was my podcast, I talk about everything, like everything going on in my life, like I would. What, whether good or bad. I get away with that on my vlogs too. Yeah, I'll yeah. just be like, guys, I'm not feeling so good today, and then all the comments are like, it's okay, Jason, we right. love you. Okay, and, and I and I understand why you don't do that because I, because yeah. when you started, when I met you, I you know I used to do like one man shows where I would like bare my soul to like 25 people. <laughs> like that's literally what I was doing before I met you. So that to me was like, yeah, I'm an artist and I'm doing my thing. And when I met you, I got this whole other different angle of stuff. And I was like, you know, you just want to make people happy. You just want to make people laugh. You want people to escape. You know, you're, you're like the show Entourage. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, like I used to love the show Entourage. You know why? why? Because <laughs> I was married at the time. And I knew Sunday at fucking nine o'clock, Vince and the gang were gonna get it to <laughs> get up to some shit. They were gonna get in a Lamborghini, right, 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 right. maybe hang with a hot babe. Well, that's why, that's, and, and that's what I saw in your vlogs. I mean, that goes along with like the movies I enjoy. Like, I I'll never say I like a dark movie. Like, I hate dark movies. I just don't like a movie that like. And by dark movie, I mean like movies where people are going through like real emotional shit or like the act like dramatic movies i just don't like those yeah like i like the super lighthearted. like when i say 50 first dates like i'm not kidding like i just like the movies that you can put on and you can watch with like a blank mind and you can just be like dumb happy yeah like that's what i've always enjoyed and that's what i've always wanted to put out like i've always wanted to put out content where it's like i'm not talking about the stuff that's like bothering me and i'm not talking about stuff that's like making me sad that day because i don't know not that i was like embarrassed but i just feel like that's not my place like it's not I'm making these videos and I don't mean this in a way to like gas myself up, but like I'm, I'm making these videos to make other people laugh and to make other people smile. Like why should they worry about how I'm feeling? And like, and, and, and that, that, that's a hundred percent true. Like I've, I've always thought, I don't know. I, 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 I hate saying that cause it does sound like I'm like, it's not about me. It's about yeah. the people watching. But like I, I, in a way, in a way I mean that. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of merit to that. And so when you, but that's, let, that's why I hate saying it because it does no, sound well, like let me say it. There's a lot of okay, merit okay, to okay, it. Okay, and, okay. and when you showed me that way I, and I was like, you know what? That is a good way to be. Cause the way I was doing it, one man shows was not working for me. <laughs> sure. You know, no one wanted to hear me sit up there and cry yeah. about my marriage or whatever. But I think, I think as like time goes on, like, and yeah, there gets to a point where that's a little bit harder to do. Yeah. Where, where, where being happy is a little bit more difficult to do. And, and actually, like, I've had a lot of, like, YouTube friends that, like, put their emotional stuff on the internet. And, like, people really love it. And then they'll come to me or I'll be talking to them about it. And they'll be like, I really regret, like, not I regret, but, like, I, I don't know why I posted that. That's so not like me. And then I'll be like, but just, like, look at all the people you're helping. Like, look at all the people you're connecting with. And right. I always say this to people, like, that, like, are, like, second guessing being, like, real on their on oh. their internet profiles or whatever it is and i'm like look at all the people you've helped just because of what you've said and and it's uh it's like i'm hypocritical because like i say how positive it is and then i'm scared to do it myself like i'm scared to open up myself um why are you scared to open up i don't know i i, I don't know i mean it's, it's just for the reason that like i just feel like it's just like you think it's cheap i don't know if it's cheap i just feel like people don't that's not that's not why people have like been attracted to me in the first place. Like mm -hmm. I think I think I've always like like we were just saying like I always want to be like people come and they know exactly what they're going to get. Just fun time, just laughter, blah 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 blah. You know how I look at it? What? Remember when you got your Tesla? Yeah. And you made a video about the car. Yeah. And in the first minute you go, "Guys, I got a new Tesla. I'm really excited about it." This is a car video. So, if you're if this is not your thing, it's not like my other videos, honestly, skip it. 
But oh. Heath and I are going to go out. We're going to make a video about this car because I'm so psyched about it. Oh, great. So, yeah, this is exactly like that, except it's not a car video. It's a feelings video. <laughs> so if you, uh, if you, yeah, skip it if you hate feelings. <laughs> um, I may skip this, actually. I may, sit, I may set this one out right now. No, but I think, I think yeah, I think that was... That was like my fun, bubbly personality, like that side to me, which was very true and authentic. Yes. Um, I feel like part of it was shot. So like... It was killed. Yes. Killed off. Part of it was... I mean, the, the, the people should know, the people that love you and support you, they should know that you've, you know, you've been going through it the last year and you, know, you haven't been the same. And yeah, we're all we're, over. we're all worried about you, no, no, no. and we come here every single day, <laughs> Natalie and I, okay, and Ilya, and we, you know, we're trying to get old Dave back. You hold the knife, and it's, your hands. it's almost like you know, it's almost like you're a drug addict. Yeah, I was friends with a drug addict once, and we used to go over there every day and try to get him to quit drugs, and he wouldn't, and that's that's how I feel with you, and and so I'm, you know, we we're hoping that if you start talking about stuff. And things are going to get better for you, and you're going to feel better. And that's all we're trying to accomplish. We're not. I don't. You're not. We're not trying to win anyone over. We're no, not. No, we're no, not no, trying no. to get sympathy. But all we're trying to accomplish is just so you feel better. And honestly, maybe this podcast won't even go up. Yeah, I think. I, I think a, the big problem is a lot has happened in my life, like the last two years, especially. Do you know I got canceled? Yeah, <laughs> I did too. No, no. But a lot has <laughs> happened, and. I just like, I mean, Ilya will say it the best. He'll just be like, you're a fucking asshole. You never talk about anything. All, yeah. you, all you do is you just keep it to yourself. Yeah. Like, open up. Like, talk to your audience. Like, all they want is, like, honesty. All, like, that's what you preach, too. Like, to be authentic. And I feel like I'm not being authentic. Yeah. By, and the re- I, I feel like we're just like leading these people on. Haven't we been talking about like nothing for like 10 minutes? Or am I crazy? Um, I think this is the best. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I this feel is, like, I feel I'm like, like, I'm so, I like a boner right now. I feel like now. if I was watching this, I'd be like, dude, <laughs> fucking say about? something yeah. else. No, like, man, let it fucking ride. Okay. Yeah, Who cares? Well, well, this is, this my... is for you. Right. This okay. is for you and me and Natalie and no one else. And we're just letting them watch it. <sighs> right. You know? And you know what the, the real crime is, David? Right. The real crime is that you are. When you do talk, you're incredible. And then when you do tell people how you're feeling and stuff, you're incredible. You're a credible communicator. And I like to think I am. You are. And you, you're doing yourself a disservice by just not being speak, confident in your. Yeah, what being you have confident and speaking from the heart. Yeah. Because you're, you're like the best at it out of all oh, of okay. us. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thanks. Um, a lot of potential to live up to now, now that you said that. <laughs> so make it good. Now people are like, oh, let's hear them. Let's hear this world-renowned communicator <laughs> communicate. Um, no, I don't know. Yeah, I think... It's also hard. There's so much to say. that We're not going to cover it all this podcast. There's so much to say. And I've told Jason, I was like, for the next month, like, like you keep preaching this. Like, okay, you take, the pre- you take the reins of the podcast and like whatever you need to get out of me or whatever you think I need to get out myself, like... Let's just do it. Let's just talk about it. So for the next couple of weeks, I just want to be able to talk about stuff that like normally I would be yeah. too scared or hesitant or find not important or like just wouldn't want to mention on live. But I feel like I not only owe it to you guys, but I, this is so lame. I feel like I owe it to myself like to like, yeah, just get it off. Like, I feel like I've just been in this like, I don't know. I just feel like I need to like come out and be like, yeah, this is, <laughs> this, this is me. This is what I've been going through. This is your coming out episode. For um, sure. But <laughs> yeah, I've been going, the last two years of my life have been like the worst years of my life. And um, uh, yeah, it's been like really, really bad. And, and, and I think it's so interesting because I'll see comments on like my new vlogs and everyone would be like, I think we cut this. I mentioned this in the last podcast, but I think we cut it out. And I'll read comments and everyone would be like, this is the happiest I've ever seen him. Yes. He's finally like, whatever hit his stride and it's like it couldn't be further from the truth Mm -hmm. like i've i've i didn't even know like i could feel something like this um it's pretty dark um and it's pretty unfortunate um but i'm figuring it out and and, and i don't know and i think and, and the thing that's keeping me going is like i know whatever a person's going through like it's going to be okay at the end of it because like you know like like when you see like celebrities or like any prominent person be interviewed or like anybody interviewed in general. It's like, what, what would you tell yourself when you were younger? And like 70% of the answers are like, it's going to be okay. You know what I mean? 
So like, yeah. If I was to take, it's not. It, trust me, I'm no, on the okay, other side. Never mind. Well, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it is going to be okay. No, but like that's how that is. That's how I look at it. Like you know, it, this stuff can't last forever. <laughs> maybe, maybe it can. <laughs> maybe I just shot myself I mean, honestly, in the face with that. But yeah. well, well, there's a lot of issues on the table, and probably the first thing is is Jeff. We should you know we should talk about that and what's going on and. How you feel about it. Right, 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 right. Recently, Jeff, our friend Jeff Wittick, posted some stuff about me, um, just about the accident and about how things have been handled. And um, you, missed, uh, you didn't call him on his surgery, yeah, yeah, yeah. stuff like that. And I, think, and, and I think there's things that I haven't really spoken about. Um, I've never spoken about the surgery or, or the incident in general. Mm. Um, so I, I think it's kind of time for that. And we asked Jeff to come today and be on the podcast. He didn't want to, and we respect that. Right. (sighs) Because I, I, yeah, I I would prefer to do, to to do that with him here, you know, but that's also a reason I don't like doing any of this stuff. I don't like doing it either. I agree with you. I just, I think like talking about someone when they're not in the room is like a really strange thing. Mm -hmm. I think you can tear open a person when they're in the room right next to you and like, you're making eye contact, but I think it's a whole nother to talk about somebody when they're not there with you. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Um, the Jeff thing. Yeah. The Jeff thing is, is the fucking worst because be- before I even say anything, um, like that is that day, uh, is like the worst the worst thing that's ever happened to me and i wish i could fucking i would fucking do anything to take that day back um my hand is shaking um like yeah i mean anything like i'm being dead ass like i wish it was me up there i wish whatever like it's like it's the most unfortunate thing ever and i think and 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 it's a shitty, it's an accident. That's what it was. It's an accident. Like, I, I also want to make that clear. I don't know if people think that, that there's, there's never a world where I would ever want that to happen to a person. There was never, I was never up there like driving the thing, wanting to hurt him or whatever it was. Like that was never the thing. Um, and I think recently, so Jeff's gotten angry recently with me and, um, and I don't know if this is, there's a lot of layers to it. I feel like, and I, and, 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 uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I think one of the main reasons um, Jeff is bummed with me right now is um, because he saw me do uh, he saw me do an interview where I said something that I promised him I'd keep between us, um, and that's something he told you. Mm. Um, yeah, and I figured that that's what it was, and then you reaffirmed it when you told me that. Uh, he's he's pissed that I broke a promise. Um, th- this is so hard to talk about because like I don't want to fucking sound. I, yeah, okay. So it was it was the day of whatever it was. It was. Uh, You've never talked about the accident. You want to go through it? Yeah, I mean we were filming a video, like my comeback video. I haven't posted in a while, and we wanted to do something exciting. And there was this YouTuber that we were collaborating with for it that like did these really cool like um, like really cool visuals of like people doing the coolest things. And one of them was um, people are like wakeboarding. I don't know what that's called while holding on to an excavator. Um, and that was like one of like five things we were gonna do. That was like the first activity that we had planned to shoot. Um, and yeah, the morning came where we were in Utah, we were filming it. <sighs> and, uh, and yeah, we were getting the shots, wakeboarding. And, um, and then I remember Jeff came up to one of my buddies, one of our friends, I don't know why I said it like that. And then later to me and he was like, he was like, this is fucking boring as shit. What are we like preschoolers? Like, let's do something cool. And he said he wanted to swing from it. And I loved the idea. I was like, hell yeah, let's do it. Um, um, so I remember too, like right before we had gotten to Utah, Jeff, Todd and I were all getting skydive certified. So we were like, we had all done like 20 jumps out of an airplane. Like we were like high on life. Yeah. Right. I remember when we all like the three of us had like this, like 
air of like not arrogance but just like we had done something so amazing all together and we had this like bonding experience oh yeah and i remember like when we landed at the airport um we just felt like so cool yeah and we were so ready to like do we're like oh we're gonna do all these like water sports and stuff like we were just jumping out of airplanes for a whole week like yeah and um there was that like there was that air of um like excitement and like wanting to do so many different things and like being able to do you guys were adrenaline junkies for like yeah. a week yeah exactly right and i remember uh, you 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 took one van in the morning and then you know i took everybody else in another van a, a couple hours later mm-hmm. and i remember going down dropping everybody off and i had to poop and i remember <laughs> and i remember and i remember <laughs> what part of i remember walking down and looking at the stunt and being like, I'm going to check this out. I'm going to see what everyone's doing. And I saw it and it was just, the, you know, the crane just taking people around wakeboarding and it was pretty slow. And I was like, okay, that looks fine. Right. I'm going to go poop. And it was really far away from the right aid that I had to poop at. It was, it was far from civilization, like 15 minutes. And by the time I finished pooping, Susie texted me and said, you know, you guys were at Utah Valley Hospital. And oh, shit. I didn't know you weren't there. Yeah, Jason wasn't even I there. I wasn't even there. And that, that, that eats me up. Um, that eats me up that I wasn't there. Yeah. Because I, I don't know what I would have done if... Because I feel like, you know, me and Matt King are always the ones that are like, hang on. You know, let's wait. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Well, and, sorry. Yeah. And I remember like we had pulled up to that stunt the, the first day and yeah. um, I remember walking up and Todd was wakeboarding for the first time. And this is like when Todd and I first started. This is the day before. This is the day. Oh, the, that day. The day yeah. Of, yeah it was the, early that day. It was 7 a.m. You yeah. started. Yeah. And I, this is when Todd and I had first started like dating. Yeah. And there was always like these jokes between Todd, Jeff and I, like, yes. you know, about like Todd and I dating. And I remember Jeff was like, Oh, Todd thinks he's so cool. Like he's just like wakeboarding or whatever. And like, cause he was like, we had just done all these things. We had just jumped out of a plane, like a million, bajillion times. Now we're just like hanging on to like a wakeboard. Um, and there's like so many more other cooler things that could be done. And so I think that like, there was just this air of like, everyone was trying to like have fun and like do cool things. It was a comeback video. There was a lot of pressure on that. I mean, I, th- I think pressure on Matt. On that. Oh, I, th- I think there's a lot. I think there's a lot to be said with just that as well. Like, I think that's why I don't want to make the kinds of videos I was making before was, is, was there was this like pressure to perform. Mm. So there was like, like, and not, I don't know. I'm like 50 50 on it because it's like on one side, like that's how things are made that are great. Like everybody wants to contribute. Everybody wants to make it bigger. Everybody wants to make it better. Like that's how great things are made Mm -hmm. is like people have a motive and people have a desire to make something amazing. And I think that's what helped with my videos is each and every one of my friends wanted to contribute. And the reason they were so good is because all my friends helped me with the videos. And and yeah, so like on one side, I think like that's exactly how something great is done. But on the other side, I could see how like that environment can get dangerous. So when we got to the hospital, um, um, Jeff was in pretty good spirits. It's a really hard thing to like navigate when you're in the hospital with something like that. Because you don't know whether or not to be like like super serious and caring or goofy, right? Like I don't know how to do that. Um, and I remember, I remember Jeff told me to check my DMs and it was, it was a video that he found like 15 minutes before the accident that somebody posted and he said, let's recreate this. And it was a guy swinging from an excavator and flying off. I didn't see that DM till the hospital and he jokes. He's like, I didn't mean literally haha. Like he joked. Um, that was the first time I saw the DM. That was the first time I opened it. Um, and then he asked, he's like, can you, can, you pr- can you promise me one thing? And I said, what? And he's like, can you just promise that no one ever knows that this was my idea? And I was like, absolutely. Like, that's not a big deal. Um, and then that's the promise I broke recently. Um, and, and, and I don't know. And, and, and here's the thing. I don't understand why that bothered him so much. Because at the end of the day, I was the one fucking driving it. It was Man. my video. I was the one sitting there. It's fucking clear as day. I am the one controlling the thing. 
he got hurt because I was driving. That's it. And I fucking know that. And, And like I said, I would, any chance I would get, I would take that back. Any chance I would get. And, and that, that'll be the biggest regret of my life, my entire life. I really hope there's not a moment that, that I regret as much as that one. Um, um, but yeah. And then, and then we, it's yeah. like, it's like a pride thing. He, he didn't want to. Okay. Yeah. Whatever it was. I, I just, okay. Yeah. Whatever it was. I was like, yes, I can, I can keep that. And then, and, and then it got like a little bit. We started filming, uh, we, okay, so there's some things that I wish Jeff was a little bit more truthful on, but given the circumstance, it's so hard because, right. he's, because he's hurt. So yeah, like, that's yeah, why I hate yeah, talking yeah. about this because he is a victim. Like he got fucking hurt. His face is crushed. He has to go through multiple surgeries. Like yeah. I understand that. So it's like really tough like going back and forth here, here, here are some when of, this is so like here are some of the gray. Thing, here are some of the things that, that he's told me that, that I, you know, are legitimate. They're legitimate gripes, you know, like... Um, he came to the house to do a Hawaii video, uh, and he thought, and you, you had planned the Hawaii trip the same day as one of his surgeries. So there was no way that he could go to Hawaii, but he was here for the re- return of the video. So, which is, yeah. Well, like, we didn't, we didn't plan that trip. Till, uh, we, we didn't know when he was getting his surgeries. We never know. And we didn't, we didn't plan that trip right. till way at, like everyone came. I surprised him with the trip. Right. And like on camera, I said it's in three days, like just to get a cool reaction. I don't even know if I included that, but, um, but it wasn't for like weeks after we right. went cause we were checking everyone's schedule and then his surgery came up last minute. So that wasn't. And the, the, the hospital bills, which is, which is one of his gripes and his credit is messed up is what he told me. But you guys are saying that you have tried well, to pay the hospital bills, right? But your he, his well, assistant hasn't well, reached back out. Well, let me get into that. Okay. I I think I think the hospital bills. This is tough. I'm not like trying to speak for Jeff, but I think it's fair that no, no, some, no, no. Someone you, does. No, 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 no. And definitely someone you know, should be speaking for Jeff because he's not here. Um, but that stuff that stuff is tough because I think it goes along with what I'm about to say. So, well, let me get to the house. Should I talk about the hospital bills or should I go? I think we we skipped a lot here. Yep. Okay, so Can I go back. Okay, so let me let me go back. So th- then we started filming. There's a lot of things that I wish were more like honest and transparent, um, and, and and that was that it was Jeff wanted to keep the accident to ourselves for a while. Um, I think he wasn't. He also just wasn't comfortable with like the way that he looked. He didn't want to show people until. You know, he was ready. That's understandable, right? And and I, and I and what bums me out is, <clears throat> I see a lot of things. I don't know if he said it or where it was like put into the universe that like I kept this from people. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, for multiple reasons, I wouldn't keep that from people. One, it's because it's his fucking face. It's his life. Like, he's allowed to share it whenever. And two, that would just be extremely stupid of me trying to hide something as brutal as that. Mm-hmm. Like, I would never ever do that, and that never happened. That was. That was, we were following his lead. Mm -hmm. So when he wanted to make a doc, like I was there, like I was like, whatever you need me to do, like however I'm going to be in this, like I'll be in it. Um, And I think the doc is where, where things started to, to get a little, little strange because I, I remember we were in Utah. We went to like three or four surgeries with him. I'm not sure back to Utah. And one of them, we were filming the doc and one of his guys that works with him um, went up to Taylor and was like, we, we really want to make David cry in this piece. We really want him to know what he's done. And there was more of what he said to Taylor, um, but that was kind of the thing that resonated with me the most. And that's where I started to feel like, oh, fuck, like, what's going on here? Like, someone's not being transparent with me here. Like, mm-hmm. I almost feel like I'm being pushed into a corner. Mm-hmm. Um, and that made me feel really, like, uncomfortable and scared. Mm-hmm. And... Um, Hey, why? What's wrong with what? What is wrong with you crying in the dock? <sighs> well, because it's just like a weird thing to say. I felt like it was like I don't correct me if I'm wrong, but like that to me felt like I don't know. Like it just didn't feel. It just felt. It just felt weird. Yeah, and 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 also I think you you know the dock came after our, a bunch of other bad shit that happened. Right, and I think it was came at the wrong time, and then, 
and and it's tough with like and it's tough and 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 then the doc got into things like his doc got into things like how like I'm not there for him like we don't talk enough and and a lot of that was true like I've never had a harder time communicating with a person than I have with him during this. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and you know, it's for multiple reasons. It's for me fucking just being bad at that shit and not knowing how to handle like such a serious situation. Um, and I also didn't know if he needed space. Like every time I would talk to him, Jeff is like a guy who like is very tough when you're to his face Mm -hmm. and is like, I don't need this. I don't need you doing this. Like I'm good. I'm strong. But then when you create that distance, it's like, what the fuck? Yeah. He's not fucking, not, not talking to me. And then like, when my other friends would go talk to him, he'd tell me, he's like, if I ever see Dave, I'm going to fucking beat his ass. Right. So it's like, and that happened multiple times for multiple different friends where he would like complain about, so like, I wouldn't know like, do you want to see me more so you can beat my ass? Like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Right. I don't know how to go about that in a way that where it's not hurting him more seeing me. Cause it, like, cause like that, that accident is so bad where like, I would understand if he wouldn't want to see me because I'm associated with like, yeah, such a shit fucking time. Um, and, 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 and back to, and back to the, the secret that he wanted me to keep. Um, I, I was all hands on deck for that, but I, I feel like I can take, you know, 80% of the responsibility, 90%, 100% of the responsibility for the accident, whatever he needs me to do. But that, you know, then when it gets to the point where it started to feel like I was taking 150% of the responsibility, right. I started to see things like, like David fucking forced his friend up there, like all this kind of stuff, like that was just fucking insane. And it like felt like people thought I like literally sent him up there just so he can fucking swing off this thing. Right. Like that was not the case. And like, the more and more that happened, the more I was like, what is going on? Like, this is not what happened. It was, it was a combined decision we made and it was a complete accident. And I'm so fucking sorry that accident happened, but it did. And there's, there's no going back from that. Like there's nothing we can do. Um, and, and yeah, I wish it was more like that. And then when it started to be like more 150% on me, it, I, I I started to get, I don't know, I guess like it just freaked me out more. I was just like, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I don't know. Um, and then in terms of his like medical payments, um, so far we've paid, um, I think I, I just had accounting check and it was like $78,000 of surgery. And I don't know what that equates to. I don't know what that is, but I just don't love the fact that he's going around saying I don't pay for surgeries like that fucking hurts like i want to help him i really truly do and like he still has my word like i told him that i pay for a surgery he can still and 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 the reason we haven't been paying for a surgery i don't know if it's his assistant's fault or 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 jeff just told him to back off from us but like i don't handle that stuff more i just give approval to to spend that whatever but like Natalie has asked multiple times, like loop us into all these surgeries and we're just not getting looped into anything. Mm-hmm. And then, and then we're blindsided when he goes to another surgery and then he'll like come out and be like, like his most recent surgery. I didn't know that he had a surgery until he unfollowed me on Instagram. And that's because, you know, it's a two way street. We can be, we can be like, when's your next surgery? But also we're not, no one's looping us into what we need to be paying for. And to this day, like I'm still keeping my word. Like I want him to send me whatever he needs me to pay for. Like I will pay for it. Um, but it's just not fair to say that we haven't been paying for it because we have paid literally every single bill that has ever we've been paid. Said. A, yeah. Every bill and, and, and wealth as, as long as he needs it. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. This, this is good. <laughs> you're, you're, you're speaking your, your mind and speaking your truth and your side of it. And it's good. But at the end of the day, like none of this, matters like nothing i say nothing he says nothing we say together will ever fix what happened like that's the end of the fact and like and that's what sucks is like it just can't be changed and it's a fucking really shitty accident and and it's just it's just the thing that i 
I don't know. I wish we could both figure out how to approach moving forward. Like, I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. You know, I, I honestly think he'll see this and, you know, really appreciate this. You think? I, I think you will because I, <laughs> I do. I do. And Jeff, if you're watching, I, 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 I think that you will appreciate this. Because I, think, I know he'll appreciate this because he, um, I think he just feels unheard and he feels like he was swiped under the rug and stuff like that. And just, just you talking about it for the first time pays a lot of credence to what happened and it'll, it'll probably really help with some healing. And I'm not, not to say maybe there's some things that we said that pissed him off too, but I think it's really good. Right. You know, and it's, a, it's a start. It's a start. And, on, you know, and I don't really care what the comments say. I don't really care what anyone has to say. This is all between us. And we're doing this so we all can heal and move on and ultimately hope things get better for Jeff too. Yeah. You know, and this is our way of doing it. You know. Um, I think it's also important to note that just because this is the first time that this conversation is happening like publicly for people to listen to doesn't mean that it hasn't happened multiple times oh my God. in private. Yeah. Which is the frustrating part of all of this is that there have been that's, many conversations that cover all of this. That's my least favorite too. It's also like really tough when like I can see from just perspective, like it's probably really tough when he sees my videos and I'm like traveling the world and I'm having this like yep. fucking time of my life. And it's like, and he's getting his eye cracked open. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, and it, and it totally looks like, you know, I haven't mentioned this. Like no one can even fucking tell that I want to fucking blow my fucking brains out. Yeah. And, 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 and I, that's part of the reason I want to do this is like, this weighs on me every fucking minute of every day of my life. Ah, oh, fuck. I'm so late. But like, but like it fucking, it's like the worst. Why are you crying? <laughs> um, no, so, it's just, I feel so bad. No, no, <laughs> it was your fault. You shouldn't have left for the bathroom. Um, no. <laughs> no, 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 I feel so bad for you, man. No, no, and, and, no, and, no, don't do and, that. No, I know. And I feel bad for Jeff. Yes, 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 yes. Jeff is the first person I feel bad for. <laughs> And then after that, I, I, I Natalie, <laughs> Natalie <laughs> who puts up with you. And then I feel bad for myself. <laughs> you got me that dog. I can't take care of. Um, <laughs> no, but <laughs> I can't keep up with him, man. <laughs> no, this that's fucking, the, this fucking blows. It fucking blows. It's such a bad shit situation. And, and, and we've tried, we've, we've, we've had uh, this conversation like has happened with Jeff face to face a good number of times. I remember when he was making the doc, we, went for a car ride around and like he was like hey i know you've apologized to me in person but like i want you to do it on camera so people can see and i was like okay so we rode around for 45 minutes and you know tears were shed and there was a lot of conversating and and he was really fair to me in the car and uh, we were really fair with each other like it was very amicable and like it was very sweet and and we got back to the house and uh and we recorded we didn't hit record on the camera really so we yeah it was i'm not kidding it was like 45 minutes an hour not hit record <laughs> where's um, oscar and then uh and then we did it again we were like let's go again so we went for the same car ride down the same streets talked about the same shit um in the same way and like that never made it in to his video maybe it was on his patreon i don't know where it was but like like that kind of bummed me out. It's like, we're having right. all these conversations and like, right. what is it for? Like, do you need to hear this from me or do you need to hear it for your video or like, and no one's seeing it at the end of the day. So like, what is it for? Like, what are we doing this for? And like, it doesn't feel authentic, you know, especially mm -hmm. the second time. Um, so, so yeah, I don't know. That's strange. I also, this is just like a really stupid, like little thing, but like the roast. Yeah. He said that he said, Jeff said somewhere that I cut out, I was cutting out jokes about myself in the roast, which is so not true. Um, he only said one joke about me, and it was it was just about I didn't even know he said a joke about me until I asked Jason. I was like, "Did you cut anything out about me?" And the joke was, um, uh, uh, "David has a new show on Discovery called Discovering David Dobrik, and the only thing they're discovering there is that David's gay." <laughs> um, 
<laughs> which is like <laughs> good joke. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean that's it's a joke we make quite often. It's a I, joke. Yeah, it's a joke I'm we make. Sure I'm not so, uh, not too sure about myself, but um, <laughs> um, no, but yeah, but we didn't I try would, to no, cut I would that. Never, or... I would never, and th- that's what bummed me out. It made it seem like I'm controlling some edit here and like taking out stuff about me. I definitely did not touch that fucking no, roast. No, not at all. I you didn't touch it. Promise you, I didn't. But, I think later it, for Jeff, it became more like he just didn't want to be involved with right but there's a way to say that other than like i'm silencing him yeah i've I've never wanted to silence jeff i've I've never um yep that's fair well hold on that's not fair well would i have loved for him to keep stuff to ourselves yeah like our conversations and stuff yes but like but no there was never a moment where i was like no one can know about this injury like Mm -hmm. like there's never a moment where he like walks into my office and like I hit a button and the door locks and I'm just like, yeah. we need to talk about some stuff. I put my feet on the you're table. You're honestly not that imposing. And or a threat- bucket you're, of cash. You're, you're not that threatening. No, I never, I never do <laughs> shit like that. You um, usually just, you know, but run the other way. I'm okay. I think, I think at the end of the day, like this has been such a city, shitty situation. Like from the moment it happened to the last couple months and, um, like I said, there's not there's not a day that goes by that I don't think about this, and I'm so sorry that this happened to you, Jeff. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, and 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 I wish it was easier. I wish it was easier to deal with this. Um, I wish we were both better communicators. Um, because. I know it eats you up and I know it eats me up and I know for a fact we don't communicate that to each other properly. Um, and I wish we did that better. Um, and yeah. And it's, I don't know. It's so fucking shitty and, and there's nothing I can say here that will fix everything. So that's why it's like, that's why this is so tough. That's why you haven't said anything. And, and, and I also like I I'll, I'll see comments sometimes like, did he forget what he did, or did people forget? And it's like, fuck no, I will never forget. I will fucking never forget. I used to, I used to love longboarding, and and one day I went down this fucking steep hill yeah. and I ate shit, like ate fucking shit, and um, and I kept longboarding, but but. Did I ever forget that? It's like, no, I never forgot going down that hill. And I made sure to never go down that hill again. Mm-hmm. And, and that's because it's a good thing to never forget, right? Like that's, this moment has taught me so many fucking lessons um, where I'm going to make sure nothing like that happens again. Mm-hmm. Um, nothing like that can even come close to it. Like we still do the goofy and like stunty things sometimes, but like now we can do it with like, now we do it with like proper people around. Um, and now, now I've learned to say no to a lot, you know, a lot of people come here wanting to jump off this roof into the pool. Cause it is like in the perfect direction, but like, uh, but like just little stuff like that, like none of that is worth it. And, um, luckily we, we get to do stuff with a TV show now too, where we have like every safety measure taken care of. And, and that's not to say that people won't get hurt. People, there's always a chance for people getting hurt. You can roll your ankle getting out of the van. Like, there's always room for that. Um, but but I'm definitely taking a lot better precautions for that. Do you think you could... Um, what, what steps are you taking to, to, I don't know, be more... Do you think you could be more empathetic in your life? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's a good question. I think... Um, Nally's gonna laugh, but I, I, I. Already laughing inside my head. <laughs> I think I've always thought I had like really solid empathy. Yeah. Because I am really empathetic when it comes to like strangers. For some reason, I'm really good with like people that I've like just met. Mm-hmm. Um, and I always thought I had good empathy, but I think what I learned recently, and like quite recently, is that it's not only like putting yourself in other people's shoes, but it's like putting yourself in their shoes as them, as the way they process things. Uh, I think like I was putting myself in people's shoes and I was just like, oh, that wouldn't bother me. You know (laughs) what I mean? And like, 
Right. I have a different outlook on a lot of different things. Like the best example I have, and this is going to sound really bizarre to say, but my grandpa passed away when we were in Slovakia. Like it was like, it was, I got to see him again and then he passed away and it was really fucking, he passed away the day I was driving back from his house to the hotel in Slovakia. Yeah. And I haven't seen him in like X amount of years or whatever. And he passed away the day I saw him for the first time. Like it was really cool. My parents were like almost stoked on it. They were like, at least he got to see you for the last time, whatever. Um, and then I learned that he passed and like, I took it as like, I'm going to see him again. Like that's how I process those things. Like it's, it's not to me like, I'll never see this human being again. Right. And I was just like, I'll just see him next time I see him like wherever in heaven or wherever it is. And, and then Todd's grandma passed away recently mm-hmm. and, and Todd was like really going through it. And I wanted to text him. I didn't know what to say exactly. So I remember I texted Natalie. I was like, I want to text him because like, I want him to know that I'm there for him. But like, I remember when my grandpa passed away, like I processed it differently. Like I didn't get a text from anybody and that's because I wasn't like showing that I needed a text from anybody. Mm -hmm. So like I asked Natalie, I was like, how do I go about this the right way? Where like he feels that I do care for him, but like I'm, it's also not like fake, it's genuine, but it's coming from a way where like, I want to check in if he's okay. So she helped me out with that. Uh, um, <laughs> when, what, did you write, what did you write to Todd? Uh, hey, man. You, you good? Hey, man, you want to go to <laughs> One Oak later to party? <laughs> hey, man, bottle service on me. I mean, that is what you do. You, you, no, make, you no. make jokes in a, no, in a bad time. No, I just said I'm here for him. Uh, I'm here for him. I'm, that's I'm really here nice. for him and I'm keeping my thoughts. I don't know. Um, but that's, that's like my big thing of empathy. Like that was just taught recently that I'm trying to be better at. It's like, putting myself in their shoes as them because I, a lot of times I look at things and I'm just like, why would that, why would that bother you? But <laughs> I, then I realized that different things bother you, me. You, 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 you definitely, you definitely missed a lot of things growing up. What do you mean? Well, like yesterday at the airport, remember at the airport when he, he had oh, the separate never car? Forget it. <laughs> that was, that was so crazy. It didn't bother me, but it was like, we, we have a van coming home from the discovery show. We get home from LAX, have a long trip and we all get in a van the six of us. And then Dave has Taylor pull up in Dave's car and he's going to go with Taylor in his car while our luggage is still coming out. Cause Dave's That's lug- not fair. I, I'm not, listen, let me finish. I didn't care. Well, we're all going to the same place. We're all going That's to the important. same place. Yeah. I didn't care because, because for, I, I, I do put myself in Dave's shoes and extra minutes at the airport for Dave means lots of pictures. So I didn't care. I'm like, Dave wants to take off in the Tesla. I don't, I don't care. Ilya and Natalie were not, they were like, they were like, Dave, that's, it was like, that's not what a leader does. Oh, hold on, time out. <laughs> time out. First, I, okay, first of all, I always have Taylor come and get me yeah. because I'm never actually on the bus with them because immigration, when I step into the country, holds me okay. in their immigration room. Like after I go to customs, they go, right. we need to examine and interrogate you. Yes. So they, I always get brought in to the room and I sit there for an hour. They're halfway down the 405. Oh, that's fair. And I'm still in the room. Okay, I didn't know that. So this was my first time <laughs> that I did customs in Houston. So when we landed, yeah. I was with baggage claim at everybody. Free to go. Taylor was there. And I told Ilya about Taylor and I go, Taylor's <laughs> here. And he goes, so what? And I go, well, I, I literally said this to him. I'm like, I kind of feel bad. Like, do I just take off? Like, she's here and like, <laughs> you guys are waiting for your bags. And he goes, yeah, can I come with you? <laughs> and I go, yeah, that's fine. And then I think Natalie went up to him and Natalie was like, can you believe this fucking douchebag? <laughs> and then I think, and then I think Ilya came up to me and then he was like, yo, now I think it's fucked up. <laughs> so I know uh... Natalie got in his head. Yeah, okay. But I did sit there with you guys and wait for the bus. But, but at one point, you did you did say, you go, okay, teach me here. What is the right thing to do? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, <laughs> so that, that, that means you're open to learning. And, and, no, I'm definitely open and, to learning. And I think you Bro, got, I, I want to I be able to be like, I want to be like 33 or 34 years old, and I want to be like the master of empathy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I've said this before. Like, I don't want to double down as like the villain. Like, I know a lot of people like, a lot of things have been said about us and trust me, I'll get into all of those in the next coming weeks. But, but I disagree with a lot. And like, a lot of people are like, just fuck it. Like fucking fuck these people. Like, right. Change your whole shit and become the fucking like, like fucking fuck all these people. <laughs> and like, that's like, I never want to do that. I never no. want to do that. Um, 
I have love for a lot of people, um, including Jeff. I've, but I've lost love for a lot of people. Um, but, but yeah, I, I want to learn and I want to be able to be like 35 and be the person that like a young creator or like a young actor or whatever comes to for advice because like this year has been the, the last two years have been the fucking worst times I could ever imagine. Yeah. But like, I don't know who does it. I think it's Kelly Clarkson, but like what doesn't kill you does make you strong. I know that for a fact. Yeah. And like, and like if I can get through this, like properly through all this and properly learn stuff from it, then I'm going to be like a really fucking strong person. And, and, and I hope that I can utilize that strength that I can help a lot of people through it. You're, and, start, you're starting today, right now, this last hour, was probably thanks. the the most growth that I think I've seen you have mm -hmm. in a year. And, you know, nice. however it's received, maybe maybe we won't have a podcast after this. <laughs> you know, like Dave was joking before we came in that this is our last podcast. And yeah, I'm ready for that. I'm I'm okay with that. Just to see you get off the fucking couch and smile is all I care about, you know? And for Jeff to smile. You know, you know what, you know is, um, I don't know if this is a, is a weird segue, but it just popped into my head. What's that movie that you like really related to yourself? What was it called? Spider-Man? No. No, I'm, not, I'm being serious. And, um, no, it's the movie where the guy's the carnival barker. Oh. Oh, uh, oh my God! I have the quote in my room: "The Greatest Showman." The Greatest Showman. When we were yeah. we were really going through it. Dave, he saw this movie, "The Greatest Showman," and he brought us all over and showed it to us. And it was it was a lot like you. Yeah, it was really interesting. I really like that movie. I have a quote from it in what, my room now. What happens now. in the movie that reminded you of yourself? Um, he. So the greatest showman is basically like this carny guy who like puts together a carnival and it's like a wacky assortment of people, which is kind of like what we are. Right. Um, old guy. And oh, yeah, yeah, he's everything. Old guy. He has like a hairy woman. <laughs> the bearded lady. <laughs> bearded lady. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's like a lot of things. And his goal is always to be like, like, to go one up from that and that's like always been my thing is like i'm always like stuck in this youtube world and i'm like i want to do something else like i want to do something bigger like i want to make a film not be an actor but like that level of like because yeah. youtube there's no respect there yeah. and i think that that that's really tough like i wish that changed because i think that fucks with a lot of creators yeah like in general like i know it fucked with me because it was it's always like it was never enough it's it's never enough like where you are like you always have to do the next thing and then he gets and then in the movie he gets like lost in it he gets what he wanted like he's he's rubbing shoulders with the stars yeah. he's like he has a completely new act but he's not doing the things that got him there and he's not doing the things that he loves and that was like being with all those wacky people yeah um not saying there was ever a moment where like i was gonna abandon anybody and being like peace like yeah. hanging out with whatever but um but just to just to wrap things up for this really bizarre podcast, um, I know things are going to be clipped from here and maybe taken out of context or taken with context, and people are reacting different ways. Um, but I, I just want to be really clear that that um, that I mean I, I've said it, but I just want to be really quick. I just want to be really clear that. Uh, that there are a lot of things that I could have done differently. There's, you know, from before the accident to after the accident to nothing to do with the accident. There's a lot of things that I could have done differently in my life. And like, and, and, and I'm sorry. And, uh, you know, I, I promised this before and I've said it in private and I've, and I'll say it again. Like I'm, I'm making those changes and I'm open to those changes. And like, I read every comment, unfortunately, that I see. So like, I, I do take everything into consideration and I'm learning and then, and then I'm not, and, and I don't do this for any other reason than, than to spread joy on people's faces and to like make people laugh, like genuinely don't do this for any other reason. Um, um, and, and I want to keep doing that and it, and, and it's been difficult to do without sharing this side or part of me. Um, cause I feel like I've kind of been like leaving all my emotions in here and like not giving you guys the full scoop of everything. And I don't know. I also want to be clear that I'm not this, this video isn't 
a, a video where I'm pointing fingers at people or anything. This was just kind of, kind of just like, like how I would talk to a therapist, like kind of just like a way of like just getting stuff off my chest in a way that like I want to like grow from this, move on from this, be better from this, and be honest about this, um, just so I can move forward accordingly like i feel like if i don't get this out or I don't get this off my chest like i genuinely am like stunting my own growth like in my character like i feel like i'm just like in this box unless i'm really sharing my experiences and what i'm feeling so that was the purpose of this and um no other purpose and, and, I'll, and i never want to be the one that like makes a video about anyone that goes like fuck you fuck you fuck you, fuck you. yeah I never never ever want to do that um, I, I think too, like I know Jeff, one of Jeff's criticisms of this podcast is that we haven't said anything. So I think that, you know, in that regard, we've, we've done right by him by just, you know, and, and, and also whatever was said today, isn't the end of it, you know, right, we're right, all, right, we're right. all learning. And if we said the wrong stuff today, we'll, we'll come back next week and oh, totally. try to correct it. We're not saying that like, <sighs> this is the end of it at all. It's just, just scratching the surface. And I think moving forward, like what Jason said, what Jason was telling me about this pod is like, he's like, I want the podcast to be like, like just talk about your shit. And there are just things that I like, I just hold to myself because like, I actually don't know why. Why, why do you, why, why have you held it? Because I don't know because I, because I always want to be the bigger person in some way. And right. I feel like maybe when, when I do stuff like talk about the stuff, it's not making me the bigger person. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also like just not making it, but that also makes me just not a person in general. There's a point where it stops being noble. Uh, yeah. And it just, it, yeah, it just like, it like harms everything. Like I've been, I can be so much of a better person than I have been the last couple months and that's just because i'm not myself at all i mean i'm like i'm like a fucking shell of david um and i hope this is step one of many where i can talk about stuff and open up about stuff and be honest and move on and grow and moving on does not mean forgetting i just want to make that clear like this isn't this there's never going to be a time where i'm going to be like fuck that that never happened like Maybe it may seem like that on the internet because I never talk about it, mm -hmm. but like, I'm telling you, this shit follows me everywhere I fucking go in my head. So like, there's no use in forgetting it because that only hurt me and, and, and remembering it just makes me learn and make, make sure I don't make the same mistakes again. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. <sighs> okay, I guess we'll see you later. Good job, David. I'm proud of you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, we'll see you guys later. This has been a Views Podcast. My name is Jeff. <laughs> Bye. Bye, guys. Bye.